run in such a way that you may win the prize. A 750 meter swim, a 30 kilometer bike ride, and a seven kilometer run. In the world of triathlon competition, that is what is known as a sprint triathlon. It's considered a sprint because it's about two thirds as long as the Olympic triathlon distance. It takes me just over two hours to complete. It is not a sprint. It is an endurance event that sometimes hurts, especially the run, which always comes last. But it's not the distances that make a triathlon a challenge. It is what are known as the transitions, of which there are two. The first comes between the swim and the bike ride, when you have to find your footing on the lake bottom, run out of the lake while peeling off your goggles and swim cap, and into the transition area where your gear and about 400 other competitors' gear is carefully arranged. I wear a tri-suit, a one-piece outfit that serves for all three parts of the event. But I have to get on bike shoes, gloves, helmet, sunglasses, and then unhook my bike from the stand and run to the start-finish line of the ride, onto the bike, clip bike shoes into pedals, and get rolling without falling over. The second transition is even trickier. Off the bike at the start-finish line, run into the transition area, hook the bike on the stand, helmet off, but not before bike is hooked, that's a hard and fast rule, gloves off, bike shoes off, socks on, runners on, peaked cap on to keep the hair organized, and then run. At this point, my legs, which are tight and tired from cycling, start whining. You want us to do what now? They protest. To which I reply in my sternest voice, Legs, don't fail me now. Transitions. They are difficult. They are tricky. And every last one of us has been living the biggest global transition in several generations. The transition of COVID-19. First it was stay home, except for essential shopping and errands. No office, no school, no church, no triathlons. In my household, that first transition coincided with my son's March break. That break was extended by one week, then two, then to after Easter. Then we transitioned to remote learning, which was definitely remote and definitely not learning. Similarly, PWRDF staff went home in mid-March for a couple of weeks that has turned to months. And all of us have learned the ins and outs of Zoom church, Zoom meetings, Zoom family gatherings. Our partners have also had to transition. A couple of weeks ago, Dr. Joel Mubaligi from Partners in Health Rwanda described how PIH has partnered with a drone company to fly cancer medications to patients in other parts of the country who due to COVID could no longer travel to the PIH hospital for treatment. In an earlier praying session, Joffrey Monjesa from the Diocese of Masasi in Tanzania described how COVID has impacted the, the diocese's community development work, as well as his, its response to flooding in the region. And all four partners with whom PWRDF partnered for the All Mothers and Children Count program are transitioning to a COVID response focused on maintaining the gains of the past four years with support from PWRDF and Global Affairs. Transitions, we're all having to confront them. And so did Paul. The Bible organizes Paul's epistles or letters, not chronologically, but by length. So although Romans comes first because it's the longest, it was in fact the last epistle that scholars agree was written by Paul. The jury is out on who wrote Colossians, Ephesians, Timothy, and Titus, but that's a topic for another reflection. In Thessalonians, believed to be his first epistle, Paul is all about being ready for Christ's imminent return. And so his message is focused on preparing the faith community at Thessalonica for the end. 
By the time we get to his letters to the Corinthians, about eight years later, Paul is preparing to travel to Jerusalem to deliver funds collected from his churches and then move on to Spain to begin a new mission. The time horizon of Christ's return is somewhere off in some unknown future. And so Paul's message has transitioned from one of preparing for the end to one of being a faithful community in the here and now and in the midst of empire. Paul's letters to the Corinthians are believed to have been authored a couple of years prior to Romans. He writes responding to a letter which has not survived that raises a number of issues that have emerged in the church at Corinth as well as to questions about his own apostolic authority. The excerpts that Irma read for us are from chapter nine of the first letter to the Corinthians. Much of it is about the question of Paul's authority. But as he does on more than half a dozen occasions in his letters, Paul uses imagery of athleticism, of a race, to call the readers of his letter to a life of faith that requires self-control, staying the course, keeping one's eyes on the prize. What was a sprint in Thessalonians has become a marathon or a triathlon in Corinthians. Early on in the pandemic, I heard a wonderful interview on the CBC radio program, Tapestry. Host Mary Hines interviewed Dr. Aisha Ahmed, a young political science professor at the University of Toronto, who specializes in international relations and security. Applying lessons from her time in zones of conflict, Dr. Ahmed has become something of an online pandemic counselor. In her interview, she sagely noted, if you sprint at the beginning, you'll vomit on your shoes in a month. She spoke a lot about transitions and about how to live into and beyond these pandemic times. Quote, you have yet to breathe into this new world and create new parts of who you can be under these conditions, new ways to be happy. The HarperCollins Study Bible notes that the perishable wreath Paul refers to was probably the one worn by winners at the Isthmian Games held every two years near Corinth, a winner's crown made of withered celery. Triathlons are usually run by age group. I now compete in what I refer to as the women's 55 plus bringing up the rear age group. We are the oldest group and we are the last wave to start. It's usually a small but quite competitive group of women because by the time you hit 55, you can't decide from one day to the next that you're going to compete in a triathlon. A little training and a fair bit of sheer determination is required. I usually manage to finish about the middle of the pack, but by some miracle in 2015, I placed first. I didn't win a crown of withered celery. I won a very practical, brand new sports bra. This is the last of our Praying with PWRDF sessions for the summer. We will be taking a two week break and then continuing again in September. And we will be transitioning yet again, back to school, back to church, at some point in the future, back to the office, and maybe next year, back to a triathlon or two. But it won't be the same as it was before COVID-19 the time horizon for a return to normal is unknown. Life and faith, they are not a sprint. The transitions are tricky. Sometimes it hurts, but we will find new ways to be community, to support our partners, to be happy. We are not alone. As the Wayland Jennies wrote, we can sing with one voice even when it sounds like a cacophony on Zoom. And there's always a great water station and maybe even a prize at the end of the race. Amen. <laughs>